going to head live to IG Markets now and speak with Chris Weston in Melbourne. Chris, I guess uh, we'll start by asking you about the Aussie dollar because a lot of news out this morning that should influence it. We did get that pullback from Fortescue, some of rhetoric now surrounding the outlook for resources. We've got the RBA later today. Are you still looking to, to sell the rallies around that 102.8 mark? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the situation we're seeing today. I mean, we're getting more anecdotal evidence that uh, the Australian dollar should be lower than where it is at the moment. Oh, yeah, you, the, the, the comments from Fortescue this morning, the, the market initially went into sold uh, Aussies on the back of that. So, again, it feeds into the, uh, the CapEx arguments that we've been seeing from a number of other firms. Uh, and, you know, the Aussie dropped about 10 or 15 pips on the back of those comments from Fortescue. It's, it's kind of holding on a little bit. Um, you know, some of the other risk currencies are still mod modest gains. You know, you're seeing the, uh, the, the euro really coming and continuing to test that 126 level at the moment. But yeah, as I said earlier, I mean, I, think, I still think that the market's expecting uh, Glenn Stevens to come out and, and, and identify the weakness that we've seen in the commodity prices. I mean, we saw that in the RBA commodity price index last night that came out at the lowest level since, I think, May 2010, down another 4.6%. So that encapsulates the moves we've seen in coke and coal. It encapsulates the moves that we've seen in iron ore. Uh, so I think the market's running a you know, pretty short book going into this, uh, into this, into this, um, into this announcement, and the risks are that uh, you know we do get a neutral statement of which then you, you you see a bit of a spike out as some of those traders close out those shorts, and that's the level that you look to go into because even if we don't get a if we get a neutral statement, if this trend of uh, weaker commodity prices comes through, uh, then then there will be at some stage uh, an interest rate cut. I think you know the conditions do warrant it right now, uh, but you know what what we, what we expect and what we hope are very different different things um, in terms of what the RBA should be doing. So yeah, looking to looking for a nice spike up at the moment because it could the risks are that we could get a neutral statement, uh, a very finely balanced statement, and then you know a lot of these short co short covers will come in, and that's where you look to sell the Aussie at the moment. But I think as well, I mean, what we're seeing is a really interesting dynamic that's playing in through some of the crosses as well. I mean, Aussie key, Aussie um, Kiwis right on key support, the uptrend support from March. That's another one you look at if you're looking for pure interest rate expectations. Aussie Kiwi remains probably the most sensitive to those interest rate expectations coming through and euro aussie is pushing that 123 level that, that that's just been an absolute staggering run recently kate up nearly 700 points in the last 16 sessions now so clearly uh you know that's been the pair to be long with the exception of uh, being probably i suppose short uh, aussie noki which is uh is probably had about six percent decline over the last six months so yeah looking to looking to sell um to rallies on this uh, on, on, on Aussie dollar. The risk obviously is tonight that we do have the ISM manufacturing numbers out of the US and if they're really, really, really weak, uh, the market's expecting that right on that 50 level, then clearly the US dollar will weaken on the, on the threat that we're going to get more quantity or a higher risk that, that they're going to announce something in September from the, uh, from the, uh, from the Fed. Yeah, Chris, certainly some movement expecting to dependent on how dovish the tone is from the central bank, but we're not expecting a move today. Aren't traders still mostly eyeing those offshore concerns when it comes to our local currency? Isn't that the, the main factor they're looking at when trading? I don't, I don't think they are as, at the moment, Kate. I mean, tr traditionally, the Aussie dollar and, and Aussie yen has been very, very much influenced by what's happening on the S&P futures. It's been, there's been a very, very strong correlation, if not tick for tick at certain stages. I think now we're starting to see a bit of divergence in the way the Australians traded and people are looking more at the fundamentals. And fine, we do have that yield advantage. People always flock to their yield advantage, but the yield will be cut if we do get interest rates. And, and if you look at what the OS market's pricing in now, they're expecting four rate cuts over a 12-month period. So the, the credit markets are now saying that Glenn Stevens and his team have to move at some stage. The conditions clearly warrant them to do it, which in, in which case you do get a lot of that yield advantage uh, coming out of, the, out of the bond market. And, you know, you, you basically see the Australian dollar coming out. So a lot of people are saying the fundamentals warrant a 90, you know, 95 cent move, uh, well, a level to about 95 cents on the Aussie dollar. So I do think that you're going to see that divergence. And it's really interesting, as I say, just to see how much the sterling or Noki or, or Euro is outperforming the Australian dollar right now. Chris, gold stocks, we've seen the precious metal run up following that, uh, that Bernanke speech last week. Is it the right time to be piling into these? I can see Newcrest up about eight tenths of a percent or have you already missed the run up? No, I'm, I'm, I think we're just starting to see the, uh, I mean, look, some of these stocks are just about to break out, Kate. I mean, we're seeing that, you know, it's probably more so in, as you'd expect in some of the smaller names. Oceana Gold looks pretty interesting right now. Regis Resources are, are 
double RL is, is looking for a bit of a breakout there as well. Newcrest, obviously, on the uh, on the bigger side of things, is, is, is looking quite interesting as well. But obviously, you have to have a view on the underlying commodity. And now we're actually seeing speculators really ramp up their uh, their hedging their, their positions at the moment. You're seeing that in the uh, the CFTC data. If you actually look at the gold holding the ETF, we're seeing record inflows the last week into the gold in, into gold ETF. So, yeah, look, it's looking very very interesting. If you look at gold, it's moving up in every single currency terms at the moment. So that's a really bullish dynamic that's taking place in the in the gold market. If you look at it purely in US dollar terms though the key level you've got to look at is 1703 we're just below that at the moment we're about eight dollars below that that's the former uptrend that was in place from the October 2008 lows we broke that loss or a couple of weeks ago and we're just about to retest that at the moment so we get a close below or close above 1703 I'm looking for a pretty sharp move up to about 1790 which was the previous pivot high so yeah I think that's going to be the interesting situation obviously a lot of people are looking to get set in some of these gold stocks it's going to be very data dependent what we're going to see this week culminating obviously in the uh, in the US payrolls report uh, and I think if we get a really weak number if we get somewhere about 50,000 then gold's going to be off to the races and that's the situation people do not want to be short gold if they if we get a really weak payrolls report because the market will get the, the anticipation that we are going to get near-term uh, asset purchases from the Fed and, and given what he said about grave concerns with in terms of the issues with the, with the employment situation when you use a word like grave concerns to me that is that we are going to get aggressive policy responses from the Fed sooner rather than later bad news is good for gold Chris Weston from IT Indeed. markets thanks for your time thanks Kate let's get